Hey guys, welcome to TFL Classics. My name is Tommy, and today I'm here to tell you why I think that in a lot of cases, automatic transmissions are better than manuals in classic cars. This is our 1988 BMW 325i convertible. And in the last video we did here over at TFL Classics, a lot of you guys commented that you really liked the car, but weren't a fan of the automatic transmission. Well, today in this video, I'm here to make my point that I think in a lot of cases, the automatic transmission is actually superior to the manual in classic cars. Now, full disclosure guys, I am a huge fan of the manual transmission. Um, in fact, you know, my first car was a manual transmission. It was an 08 Mini Cooper S. And I'm a huge proponent for what they do to the automotive industry. But I also know that in, in some cars like this E30, you don't necessarily need a manual transmission to truly enjoy the driving experience. You see, classic cars like this BMW are by far my favorite breed of automobile. I love the history behind them and the stories they can tell. I like the classic design and engineering, but let's be real, they're getting kind of old. Now here's what I mean. I think that when a lot of people think about manual transmissions, they think about slamming through gears, you know, dropping the clutch at three, 4,000 RPM. And while that may be great when cars are new, when they get old, things start to change because old cars are, for the most part, pretty fragile. First of all, you know, old cars just weren't built to the same standard that they are today. Plus, they're also getting up in age. Rubber starts to perish. Metal starts to rust. They're just not as robust as a brand new car off the lot. They're also a little bit rickety. And <laughs> this is what I mean, you know, they're 30, 40 years old, they start to develop a little bit of rattle. The suspension setup isn't as tight as it used to be. Even on fully restored cars, it's super hard to get that exact factory finish. And next up, they're also, well, there's, just, there's only one way to put this, you know, pretty, pretty slow. And I don't mean this to be insulting to old cars, but you know, when you think of slamming through the gears and going fast with a manual transmission, Old cars just can't do that necessarily because by modern standards, a lot of them are pretty slow. Let's take that 325i for example. Now back in 1988, that was a pretty fast car. That would be equivalent to like a BMW M340 today. I mean, it was really zippy, but even still it only has 170 horsepower. Heck, even a 1988 Mustang V8 only had about 225 horsepower, so they aren't really fast cars. And here's what I mean, let's compare our BMW convertible to the most affordable BMW you can buy today, the X1 with a two liter turbo. Now, according to BMW, our 325i convertible can do the quarter mile in 17.9 seconds. Keep in mind, this isn't a 318, this is the full on 325i, the big engine. Meanwhile, according to Motor Trend, a 2017 X1 can do the quarter mile with the smallest engine in 15.2 seconds. So that's a difference of, wait for it, 2.7 seconds. That's right guys, our full on 325i that would be $60,000, $65,000 in today's money is actually slower than a 2017 X1 X-Drive and not a little slower, like a lot slower. Now granted, the manual transmission 325i was faster, but even still, it was slower than the X1, 1.3 seconds slower in the quarter mile. So as much as we like to think of these old heroes as being full on sports cars, full on sports sedans, by modern day standards, they're just not all that quick. Plus over the years, you know, some horsepower, some torque has escaped from that straight six. Now granted, yes, some old cars are still fast by modern day standards. But when I'm driving this BMW, there's no part of me that wants to, you know, drop the clutch from 4,000 and really slam through the gears. This car is 31 years old, and I kind of feel that as a car ages, it deserves to be truly respected and to be driven with care and kindness. I mean, I wouldn't make my 87 year old grandpa run the 100 meter dash over and over and over. So why would I do the same to my classic? My point is with this car, if I want that fast, racy, slam it around the canyons driving experience, I'd go out and buy something like a new Mazda Miata. 
But this BMW 325i, especially the convertible, especially 31 years after this thing was made, this is a car that I want to take to the beach with Donna Summer in the cassette player, just cruising with friends. This is not a car I really want to go slamming around in. There's also the matter of enjoyment, and enjoyment by the most people possible. And here's what I'm talking about. Resale and the ability to sell your car. Now, according to recent studies, of all new cars sold today, only 3% have manual transmissions. But more importantly, in the US here, according to a 2016 study, only 18% of Americans know how to drive a manual transmission. And this impacts classic cars in several different ways. First of all, if you want you know, your family members, your friends to really enjoy the car behind the wheel and they don't know how to drive a manual, they're not gonna be able to do that unless you teach them. And you might be thinking, yeah, I'll just show them how to drive a manual, but are you really gonna risk that on your precious BMW? You're probably not. The other thing too is 18% of people know how to drive manuals. If you're selling that car to the larger population here in the US, beyond just enthusiasts who might buy an E30 BMW, you're selling that vehicle now to a much larger pool of people that can drive and enjoy it with the automatic versus the manual transmission. The other thing too that makes perfect sense in my mind at least is this fact. I like to think that these old automatic transmissions are not only better value but they're less abused than their manual transmission cousins. And here's what I'm talking about. You know, if you're buying a performance vehicle, as they depreciate, they get into the hands of people who are gonna race them, track them, really run them hard. People, you know, of my age and stature who put loud exhausts on them, and those guys want the manual transmissions because they're faster. In my mind, you know, the E30s with the automatics are the ones that are kind of baby. They're driven by the non-enthusiasts. They're driven by people that take it to church on Sunday and just want to cruise around in them. So, that's a good and a bad thing because this right here is the Haggerty price evaluation guide for our E30. And you can see right down here, there's a little value adjustment. Minus 10% for the automatic. Now this is a problem when you're trying to resell it because in the enthusiast market, it's gonna be worth in theory a little bit less than a manual transmission. But it also means that you guys can go out and experience these cool classics for a smaller outlay if you get the automatic. And some cars are more dramatic than 10%. I was just looking at 1995 300ZX twin turbos on Haggerty, minus 15% in value for an automatic. And those are cars that are really starting to shoot up in value right now. So if you want one of those cool, crazy Japanese sports cars, be it Supra, RX-7, 300ZX of the 1990s, the manual transmissions, the ones that people really want, are just through the roof. The automatics are still through the roof, but a lot less so. It's much easier and much more affordable to get into an automatic a lot of the times than that manual. And you still get the incredible steering, the awesome engines, the beautiful suspension tuning of these classic cars. You just don't have that manual transmission. And for a lot of you guys, that's a huge deal. But in my opinion, when you're just cruising down Hollywood Boulevard, enjoying the sun, does it really matter if you have a manual transmission? I mean, I feel like they get such a bad rap in the automotive community, especially among enthusiasts. Like, it's not the end of the world if a classic has an automatic. It's still a classic. It's still fun to drive. It's just a little bit different. The other thing to take into consideration, too, is that, well, let's be real. Our planet's not getting any bigger, but our population sure is. And, you know, go to a city like L.A., where you sit in traffic for hours on end, you know, people out there still want to enjoy a classic car like this, but they also want to have their left leg work after a week of driving. And in big congested cities, an automatic is just a much better way to go. So there you have it, guys. This is my opinion on why I think in a lot of cases, automatics are actually better than manuals in some classic cars. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate from the online community for have doing this video, um, but this is actually how I truly feel, and I'm just putting it out there. Let me know in the comments sections below what you think of this debate and if it really is okay to have an automatic in a classic car or if you have to have the manual. As always, I'm Tommy with TFL Classics. Go back to tflcar.com for more news, views, and real world manual versus automatic reviews.